Good afternoon. Welcome to the FTS Bet Slip on Monday, the 29th of November. Um, yeah, my boy's birthday yesterday. Are oh, my wedding anniversary today? 24 years we've been married. Um, flipping dearie me. Flipping dearie me. 24 years. Madness. Um, and being together, 29. Flipping ick. Um, and, but not just that, I didn't actually realise this. It's Chrissy Spreadsheet's birthday. And I'm going to tell everybody Chrissy, so you get a load of messages. He is um, 40 today. Chrissy boy. 40. His family's not well at the minute. Sam's not well. I have just taken a lateral flow. I was feeling rough. Well, I do feel a bit rough, but I'm, it's blank at the minute. So... Um, I just gave Chrissy a lesson. Just calm yourselves down over the uh, Omnicron. Just get yourselves a little bit calmed down. Everybody's going into panic mode. Um, there is a really good person who I follow on Twitter. I'm going to tell you because I don't have to answer all the nonsense. Thank you all for the vitamin stuff and all that as well. Thank you to people who some good stuff there. I've not gone through it all, but some really good stuff. Um, and, and points made that I will look at as I say it wasn't something I'd gone into um, but at uh, she's it's called C-H-I-S-E at Sailor Rue Scout S-A-I-L-O-R R-O-O-S-C-O-U-T Senior Scientist Vaccine Research and Development um, and as soon as this Omnicron stuff broke she um, she he don't know who it is I think it's a she um posted a uh, sort of don't get scaremongered about um, the, the data on this and the news is absolutely if there's if there's one thing I'm going to tell you today it's to ignore the media and the click clickbait headlines on the new variant there is no plausible scenario this will take us back to square one and there's a lot of misinformation as there is with everything currently circulating working on a thread now and then she does a long thread talking about the science of it and um, actually the the polyclonals and t-cells and the spike proteins goes right into it um so it's well worth a read but i tend to look at people like that who seem to have half an idea and i'm sure there are people who poo poo it but i'm um, seem to have half an idea what they're talking about rather than the front cover of the daily mail and our bumbling buffoon of a fucking blonde haired idiot um that is still unbelievably fucking at the helm um but there you go there's some of you love him you're welcome to it um right what else um going to talk a little bit about probability today a little bit about conditional probability something i really want to get into um sort of as a a follow-on from the summer school I, I was hoping to do some videos last time i'll do a couple of videos for the summer school just sort of to round that off as we get into this last month but obviously i don't want it just to end there so i'm gonna i'm i'm, I'm looking at the setup of everything I always I'm always looking what can we do better what can we educate people how can we do it and then the time involved to do these things um, so we've got lots of stuff the racing we're obviously looking at I've got the in place sheet which I put on telegram which we're looking at um, and obviously then it's just providing the education and stuff like that through things like the summer school as I say rather than me just sitting up and banging on the same stuff so a lot of people I get messaged um, you know how do we get to these odds and when i say their value and that and i understand the issues that that come with actually forming an opinion um and I, and i'm quite i've said this before i'm quite black and white with stuff like this because i have to be so i have to believe my opinion i have to believe what i do otherwise um what's the point in doing it so you do have to be a little bit sort of bullish about that um whereas we live in a in a very uncertain sports markets you know we don't know what's going to happen and in a game where people have a lot of doubts so you get a few bad results and obviously un understandably um, the doubts come so ultimately everything everything we do is maths I've said this for years blogs going back to 2007 8 9 I was putting it it's mathematics and everything is a probability that's all it comes down to and a probability percentage can be turned into odds and then we can see what we think compared to what everybody else thinks and I think the first thing of that is there's obviously two types of probability I'm going to use the Arsenal game as an example um, and try and walk you through some of the some of the reasoning into that game so the um, there's a theoretical probability and we you know the, the best example we ever give of that is a toy cost 
<laughs> coin toss. I can't do that. I did that before in a podcast, didn't I? It's a coin toss. I obviously clearly have a problem with that phrase. Is a is a coin toss. We know that it is fifty fifty. It's a it's a pure theoretical probability. It cannot it cannot provide, and you've got a fair coin. It cannot go any other way. There's two equal ways that that coin can land, and um, and if you keep going over a over you know thousands, hundreds of thousands of tosses, the large large numbers, you'll end up getting to a probability of fifty percent. That's what will happen. Um, and what people tend to do with betting, I think, is try and think that there is this theoretical probability and, and it is the bookmakers who said it and that. Bookmakers, people on the exchanges, are in essence, and I'm probably going to do some, some will think I'm doing them a disservice, but I don't think they are. They are professional guessers. That's what they are. They are professional guessers. They, they have no... Um, you know, they, they obviously have good skills and this, that and the other, but this thought that, you know, which is an eternal argument I have with people that, that betting markets are purely efficient and that there's people out there who can control that and there's a load of big players that are so much shrewder and they get it and can predict the future um, is completely and utterly false. It is completely and utterly false. And again, I firmly believe that. And if we didn't believe that, then we really should just pack the game up and let these guys just do what they do. Um, so I firmly believe that this efficient market sort of incantation doesn't apply to sports betting. I can't say whether it applies to other things like the stock market or that, because I don't know enough about them. But... Um, you know that there's people there who will build models and ultimately we end up with this wisdom of the crowd type thing but sports betting is a conditional probability so and and it's where you've heard me mention a couple of times on the um Bayes, the name Bayes, who was a mathematician he actually died i think before his his formula got put out there but you know, he'd done enough research and other people carried that on, that basically it's a formula for determining conditional probability and it um, basically means that the probabilities change on the on new income, um, new information, and that's what happens in the betting markets. As we get new information, those prices change. So you've got people now who will have, and one of the things that I think is really key here is you'll have people, and I remember seeing it on Twitter probably two years ago, three years ago, somebody asked how big someone's database was and and didn't ask it in a in any other way, but it was almost like I became a badge of honour. Mine's X, Y, Z, Rose. Mine's X, Y, Z, Rose. Mine's X, Y, Z, Rose. And a lot of the stuff we do on FTS Ultimate is more a sort of frequentist probability. So in effect, we're looking at things, we're looking at outcomes over a period of time, over a database, and we're saying that frequently happy that frequently happens um, and the frequentist interpretation of probability can work but you've got to determine how far back you're going to work go and you've got to be really rigid in your rules and what you're going to stick to um, and how it's and how it's going to go so we're, in effect we've got a well-defined set of rules that we're looking at that that have happened frequently and we're going to trust and it does become a trust that they are going to continue to happen and that's where we don't want to filter too much you know we want to take this sort of it's a frequentist approach but it's quite broad brush um conditional probability is where we're taking stuff and, and sort of more down the Bayes road where we're taking stuff down on information changing and we change our approach on that so for an example if we look at a frequentist approach to the database on arsenal and elo ratings um, and Statsbet put a thing up when I put the poll up on Saturday. Um, Arsenal is shit. And he's perfectly in his rights to say that. I'm not digging you out, Statsbet. I'm just using that as an example. Lol, Arsenal is shit. But when we use conditional probability and look at our, actually who Arsenal are playing and work through that game in a, in a conditional probability sort of basis, we can go a lot more closer i don't need 250,000 games i can go a lot more closer and i i said on the pod on saturday i actually whittled it down to or friday even whittled it down to 17 games um that arsenal had played 
in recent times when they've been in the top six against bottom six sides and they've lost none of them. So that that shifts my probability instantly. Arsenal are actually really good at home against shit teams. Then I look at Arsenal overall at home and no other team since Mikel Arteta's been in charge other than Arsenal, uh, other than Liverpool, Chelsea and Man City, the three best teams in the league by an absolute mile. No other team has got more points at home than Arsenal. So Arsenal finished, you know, I was talking to Suggsies earlier. Arsenal finished, what, ninth last season? They still got more, they're getting more home points. United have finished second. Arsenal are getting more points at home. So that moves my conditional probability. So I'm starting from I'm starting from a view on Arsenal of an odds, and then I'm shifting it as this information comes in. And obviously it's the value of information, but I, I think there's a danger, and perhaps we've sort of um, cultivated a bit on FTS because we don't show everything that we do of frequentist approach and having masses of masses of data and I've had a conversation that email exchange with somebody this morning talking about horse racing and they've they basically took a video of what I did and a video of the same sheet now but the video I made was in 2017 and I don't even use 2017 horse racing data now our racing data is run on a three-year basis all my football models are run over different time scales so everything I don't just look at oh I've got 4,000 billion games and let's see what happens I'll look over 8 games 10 games 12 games and think because what's happening now what's happening now to me sort of a Bayesian type approach what's happening now has a massive effect on on what I think and my probability of how things are going to move forward so I don't just look at, at um you know, golf's a great example. Golfers play in fits and spurts, so it's no use looking at a golf play, a golf record over four or five years because that player is completely different. And football teams, look at Tottenham now compared to Tottenham 2018. They're in the same database. When we filter Tottenham, we've got all that info, but we need to try and apply some conditional probability rules to it going forward. And that's why I like things like Poisson because Poisson, for example, the model you get with Ultimate, it's only focusing on this season. It's actually telling you what's happening now. It's who's scoring the goals, who's letting the goals in. And from that, we can actually get quite accurate to, to what's going to happen. It's not an exact science. It doesn't say that is exactly going to happen. But I'm just trying to explain the approach, whether I'm doing it again, I always wonder whether I'm doing it well or not, that conditional probability. So that Arsenal game, you know, I do think they were one of the bets of the year. I honestly think they were one of the bets of the year when you looked at the, the conditions of that game and the probability that was on offer. They were available on the they were available on the machine. At one stage they went up to about one point six, I think, but what they went off at one point five. So the market was giving them what, a sixty six percent chance of winning. Um and I gave them a lot greater chance so if I started on that base figure of 66 which is what the market thinks and then I look and people will say it's all factored in but I think they were, I think they were massively wrong and of course it's easy to say because they won the game but I said it on Friday I said it long before the games played I put a poll out there for that exact reason to see what people thought Arsenal were an outstanding price I do not even know how they went off at 1.5 when teams like Man City were going off at 1.33 against West Ham um they're playing a team that have, have yet to win a game this season. They're playing a team that I think have lost something like the last 20 games against Arsenal at the Emirates. It's something ridiculous. I can't remember the exact numbers, but I looked at it. And whilst people say heads to heads don't matter, Tottenham couldn't win at Chelsea. Didn't win at Liverpool for 73 years. If you think it's got absolutely nothing, I disagree. Uh, I think teams get mental blocks about going to ground. 73 years Tottenham didn't win at Anfield. I remember the day we did it. Um, and it, it was exactly the same Chelsea. It just became a thing. Oh, we don't win there. The players were talking about it, apparently. I've heard last week Lampard was talking to somebody. And he said on a on a TV programme, I, I haven't seen it, but it's been reported back to me. Oh, yeah, we used to call it three-point lane and this, that and the other. Tottenham, Tottenham could beat Liverpool in that period. They beat City in that period. They beat United in that period. Just couldn't beat Chelsea. It was like a... a hex over them so you look at all these sort of things so we start with Arsenal we go right actually they're really good when they're in top six against bottom six they've got a fantastic home record over the last three four years despite how shit they've been particularly again against lower teams uh, they've got a fantastic record against Newcastle they're actually on a really good run of form bar losing to Liverpool which you know we factored in anybody can lose to Liverpool and then they're playing a team that is 
actually pretty shit. Almost certainly for me, and again, I've said it, think they're going to get relegated. I put on Twitter on, on Saturday after the result. I do not see how Newcastle genuinely don't get relegated when I look at the teams down there, five or six teams down there. I don't trust Eddie Howe one bit. You know, you've appointed a guy whose last job was getting relegated. Um, you've got six points, haven't won a game. They've got a horrendous run of fixtures coming up. You know, I think all Newcastle fans are clinging to this fact that they've got, um, you know, this the Saudi nation behind them. They've got to get to January, and and we all know what it's like when you're down there. Uh, I I haven't looked up the exact stats, but I can't see them having any more than ten points come Christmas. How many teams with that number of points have survived? They've got an absolute horrendous run of fixtures. They've got Norwich, which is fair enough, and Burnley. Then they're away to Leicester, away to Liverpool, home to City, home to United, who hopefully by then, obviously, with Ranić in charge, will be a better outfit. Good performance yesterday against um, Chelsea. By all accounts, I watched about the last 10, 15 minutes. Rudiger should have scored, but didn't look to be matching it. Maybe Chelsea controlling the game, but didn't really look like scoring to me. Um, so, right, OK, so that the Norwich and Burnley games become absolute must-wins. I'm not sure they're capable. Norwich coming off two wins. Burnley always easy, tough to beat. Can you honestly see them then getting a point from the 12th to the 27th of December against Leicester, Liverpool, City and United? I can't. I can't see them getting a point. I don't mean that horribly. I can't see them getting a point. And, and you're well detached. So that's the form you're talking about. So all these things then form an, an opinion... Which, and that's all it is, and all anybody's is in 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 this odds making game. There are no odds making experts who get it right, despite what other people may tell you. And you end up with this not you know coin toss theoretical probability, but as more information comes in and you apply more information, then you form your own probabilities, and it, it's a good exercise. And that's pretty much how I started in my odds compiling. I came up with a concept in my head of how I want to do it. And I've stuck to that, but then obviously we've extended things out to Poisson and ELO and all these things can get drawn into the mix. And for me, it's really important, not just having thousands of lines of data, but being able, and perhaps it's a skill, perhaps that's one of the things that we need to teach and, and I'm not, how far back do we go, what's relevant, what isn't relevant, and you can add those in. But I think it would be a good thing, you know, perhaps after Christmas, get the busy Christmas period out of the way, to sort of... A, extend the summer school if you like into a into a process through to the end of the season of getting people to try and and put um conditional probabilities on on certain football matches so literally just picking a football match and, and perhaps picking one not quite as blatant as that and getting people to to actually physically do an exercise of pricing it up on their own and what they come up at and and the one thing I do, I don't ever look at any odds before I do my stuff. I don't look and see what the market is. And you'll hear me again, I've said on the poll, I couldn't believe it when I saw the price. I had Arsenal sub 1.3. I had Arsenal as absolute nailed on um, on Friday. Absolutely. So then I look and go 1.5, whatever it was, 1 or 2 when I looked. I think, what is going on? And you, of course you do. You think, what have I missed? I've missed something. Somebody must be out, whatever. Um, I didn't miss anything. Just an absolute mismatch. And I think the market was horrendously wrong. And I've said it numerous times. And it doesn't mean you're always going to win. But I do think the market was horrendously wrong. I thought the market was wrong. Leeds against Tottenham. No matter how bad Tottenham have been. Tottenham are, Tottenham are what, four points off the top four with a game in hand. You'd think the legs had fallen off players. We've been terrible. Been absolutely terrible. And we're sitting in seventh spot. Um, you know, so so this conditional probability is a it's a it's understanding the difference between the two and understanding that, that new information in sport does change things and and you should never discount that. What you weigh to it, one of my particular bad things that I don't do because I'm not good at it, is which I'm going to look into over the next couple of years as, as I develop, is what weight you give to players. Um, and I think I'm probably um, biased because I go to see Spurs. And I've seen Spurs without Harry Kane. You know, take the first game of this season against Man City. It's probably the best we've played all year. And we beat Man City without Kane in the team. So when Kane was out, which he has been for the last three years, 
invariably the price on Tottenham lengthens, where I actually think we've actually done okay. And that doesn't mean Harry Kane's not a brilliant player, massively important to us, because he is. But we have, when we've been forced into that situation, conditional probabilities move the market out, where I've looked and thought, I actually don't think it's that big a deal. Um, and we've had periods where he's been out, where we've accumulated more points, not saying we've scored as many goals, but we've accumulated more goals, more points per game without him in the side than with him in the side um, you know and, and when he came back this year we won what the first three games he didn't play won three out of three he came back and we were dreadful um, so that basically it, it is this it, it, I just wanted to give a rough overview it is this conditional probability I'm going to do a bit more on it we'll talk a bit more about the formulas I think again it'll be something I'll have to do some written blogs about and perhaps some videos um, but it is that, that thing that actually being able to change your mind and change your strategy based on new information is never a bad thing. It's never something to to walk away from. It's a skill, but it is, you know, particularly in some of the short term markets, like when players are hot scoring goals, um, and this, that and the other, if you're a if you're a goal scorer better, stuff like that, it is something that you should consider. But certainly when you're looking at, at teams, you know, that Arsenal thing, um, you know, I've got several bits of information there that it's not going back years. I'm looking at from when Arteta was there. No more teams have got more home points than the three big teams. The team they're playing is absolutely terrible. Arsenal's recent form has been pretty good. Um, so all these things come in conditions that make me adjust my view on what I think of that team rather than just saying... Um, Arsenal are fucking pony and they have been pony by Arsenal standards um, you know how could you bet them short prices um, and I'm not a massive short price better you know I, I, I am in some of the goal markets first half goals and things like that but I'm not a massive team short price better um, you know I, I, it's really difficult to get a, a long term edge betting a lot of those games in my opinion and I think if you filter databases you'll see you can go but Every now and then, there is a nugget that stands out. And, I mean, Liverpool, were, as I said, were an absolute shoe in I think they were the best 1.33 shot you'll probably see for a long time at the weekend. Um, but Arsenal were, for me, not just one of the bets of the weekend. Though it was one of the bets of the year. I think they were absolutely, uh, absolute, win or lose, just a crazy, crazy price. Um and it just sort of shows, you know, as I say, I, th I think I, where I guess I'm going with you guys, if you put a bit of work into it and a bit of different thought process and and whilst that frequentist approach is something I use and I like, there's more than one way to skin a cat. It is a it's a really good thing to look into. And I guess if you look in horse racing, it's, you know, looking at horses that are uh, have run well and perhaps not won is where people look so you see that that's information it's changing your probability the horse might be 20 to 1 but you've seen information two or three runs ago where it ran really well and you know it might have finished fourth or fifth so it's got a form figure of five but actually and i guess that's what the people look for i don't know enough about horse racing to be able to do that but um those sort of things so really conditional probability theory is something you can use to exploit market positions um and 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 it's something that perhaps people should look into but the basis of it is that that your version of the probably obviously you need to start with the probability of something so you may use a frequentist model to do that and then you can adjust that on new information coming in as i say and that's what we see happen every weekend when team news is announced and this that and the other you know cup games are top prime example united are 1.4 and then they announce a second string 11 they'll go out to 1.7 that's conditional probability it's just where all of a sudden that new information has forced people to change their mind and that happens in the sports markets all the time and i think once you can get it in your head that the markets aren't perfectly efficient and and there aren't these people who are set in precise odds because that is impossible there's no professional odds setters that are spot on right every time there's professional odds setters they're professional guessers that's what they are they've got a wealth of information and massive stuff but in effect all they are is professional guessers that's what they're paid to do um 
and and overall that they can move their odds they see what other people are doing and move it you know they call it the sharp money particularly in american sports handicap line will go out the sharp money will spot it bite it up so they the odds themselves are moving as they get that information oh such and such is really good he's bet that team by the way i had four from four in the nfl yesterday um but yeah so it's, it uh, I, I, as I say, I always worry with these things when I'm just waffling. On, I, you know, again, it's sat in a room talking, um, but it's where I want to go after Christmas. We'll look into doing some of this stuff. So hopefully, um, take some of you along, and I'll I'll have a look at how to structure that and get it out. Um, yeah, and everything else as normal. Got football to process tomorrow. Um, got my boy's birthday out of the way, so that's done. You know, it was a bit of a damp squib, unfortunately. Sam isn't well. I I don't feel great, but as I say, I'm okay. But whatever, life will go on. I'm not dead. I'm a machine. We'll keep pushing on. Um, it will sort of, football volume will pick up as we go through December. And obviously, we will be a couple of days off for Christmas. But I think even then, there'll be football most days. Um, so continue as normal. Happy birthday, Chrissy. Happy anniversary to me. She's done well the last 24 years. Um, enjoy your... Day. I've got a guest pod tomorrow, um, football process, uh, and everything just rolls on as normal. But um, yeah, what's the conditional probability of this um, podcast getting some proper production behind it into 2022? I'd like to know. Uh, it's about 4%. There you go. Right, have a lovely Monday, and I will speak to you all on, um, I'll speak to you all tomorrow.